Hi, I'm Dr. Venkatesh Munikrishnan. I'm a consultant colorectal surgeon at the Apollo Main Hospitals, Chennai. Today, we're going to be talking about colorectal diseases. Some of the commonest colorectal problems we face are hemorrhoids or piles, anal fissures, anal fistulae. So we'll start off with that. The most common symptoms patients present with are perianal pain, rectal bleeding, a change in bowel habit, which could be constipation or a little bit of diarrhea. If patients complains of Severe anal pain with a little bit of rectal bleeding when you go to the toilet with constipation in the background, it's usually an anal fissure. So when you look at hemorrhoids or piles, a classic symptom is bright red rectal bleeding, painless, and some change in bowel or constipation. So remember this bright red rectal bleeding, which is painless, is hemorrhoids or piles. Now these two conditions can simply be corrected or improved by changing your lifestyle, by drinking lots of water, uh, taking a lot of vegetables, cutting down on fast food and red meat. The problem we face is that everything in India is generalized. If you have colorectal disease, if you see some rectal bleeding or some bowel habit change, immediately it's generalized as piles. And I think it's very important to point out there are many conditions of which one is piles or hemorrhoids. So that's very important for you guys to know. The other common condition which we encounter is perianal abscess or anal fistula. Now, this condition happens because of an infection of an anal gland, which forms an abscess, which can be painful. There may be some blood in the stool, but mostly it's pain in a lump. And this can burst out and com cause an anal fistula. The treatment for perianal abscess and anal fistula is usually surgery. So these are the three most common conditions which we come across in the perianal region. Now, the symptoms which I described for these three common conditions of perianal pain, rectal bleeding, change in bowel habit, can also represent another dangerous condition called colorectal cancer. Now, colorectal cancer is becoming a huge problem in India. There is a report of 50 to 60,000 new cancers every year, and another 20,000 cancers in the subcontinent. The other thing we're noticing is that young Asian males are affected with low rectal cancers, and that's becoming a huge problem too. Now, the common symptoms for colorectal cancer are change in bowel habit, rectal bleeding, anemia, weight loss, and a lump in the abdomen. You might have noted that some of these symptoms of rectal bleeding change in bowel habit are very similar to common perianal conditions we discussed earlier, like hemorrhoids or anal fissure. Therein lies a problem because often patients ignore these symptoms, presuming them to be piles or a fissure. Therefore, they report their symptoms late or come at a later stage. So when we investigate these patients, we find that the tumor is advanced and that complicates treatment. So the important thing to remember is when you have these symptoms for more than six weeks, you need to go see your doctor or see a specialist and they will send you off a few tests, which will ascertain what the problem is. The gold standard test for assessing colorectal problems is colonoscopy. Now, this test is very good because they put a tube inside your rectum and colon, and if they find anything abnormal, they would take a biopsy and we can confirm what the problem is. Sometimes they might ask you also to get a CT scan or an MRI scan, depending on what they think the clinical problem is. The management of colorectal cancer is complex, and that's why most of these cancers are managed by multidisciplinary teams in most of the specialist hospitals. The multidisciplinary teams comprise of the operating surgeon, medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, medical gastroenterologist, radiologist, pathologist, and stoma therapist, and a colorectal nurse too. Now, all these specialists sit together, discuss the patient's condition, x-rays, the CT scans, the biopsy reports, and then a final decision is made to what sort of treatment the patient has to go through. What this consensus does is it recommends the best treatment for patients. And I think all colorectal cancer and complex colorectal diseases as inflammatory bowel disease have to be managed in a multidisciplinary team setting in specialist hospitals. As far as colon cancer is concerned, the treatment is straightforward. You will need surgery. And then based on the final pathology report, you may need further chemotherapy. 
with a medical oncologist. The management of rectal cancer is a bit more complex as most of rectal cancers will need preoperative chemo radiation to shrink the tumor followed by surgery a few months later. Most of the advances have happened in the field of rectal cancer surgery more recently with the use of robotic surgery. We at the Apollo Main Hospital have been using this for more than four years now and have the biggest experience in robotic colorectal surgery in the country. With robotic surgery for rectal cancer, we find that patients have less pain, lower blood loss, lower complications, quicker recovery, and lower length of stay in hospital. The Institute of Colorectal Surgery at the Apollo Main Hospital has been functioning for the last four years. We are a super specialist unit in managing colorectal problems and a pioneer in the field of robotic surgery for colorectal cancer. With reference to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, there has been lots of concern about patients seeking help or treatment for non-COVID problems in hospitals. I would like to reassure you, through this pandemic in the last four or five months, we've been routinely treating patients with colorectal problems and colorectal cancer. We've been routinely performing robotic surgery, which is essentially socially distanced surgery, because in robotics, we have a separate console and a robot, which is right next to the patient. So we require less number of team members to perform the surgery. This has been very beneficial because we reduce the risk of cross transmission of infections because the number of personnel in theater are less. And that has been very beneficial to patients. I would like to reassure you at this stage that the COVID-19 infection rates in Chennai city is, has stabilized and is going down very nicely. And we're starting to see that patients have started to come back for routine care to all our Apollo hospitals across the city. So if there's any further queries you have, please do get in touch with me. Do not hesitate to email me or call our hotline number, which is provided. Thank you.